First things first, it's primary election day in Massachusetts. And if you haven't voted yet or forgot it was even happening, you have just under an hour left to get to the polls. As I've said before, if you don't vote, you can't complain, which we all know is one of America's favorite pastimes. In fact, some are now lodging complaints about how we vote, and perhaps with good reason, which we'll get to in just a couple of minutes. But first to the drama out of the Capitol today surrounding Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing. Protesters were everywhere, some dressed up as handmaids from the famous Margaret Atwood novel turned TV show, others interrupting Senate proceedings as they got underway, and some from the Democratic senators themselves. If we cannot be recognized, I move to adjourn. The American people. Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. We're about to proceed towards having a hearing on someone having a lifetime appointment on the most important court in the land. And we're going into this only having 10% access to 10 percent of, of the body of work of this man's career. Senators are referring to their request for a delay to that hearing after 42,000 pages of documents related to Kavanaugh's time in the Bush White House were released only last night and more than 100,000 pages are still being withheld by the Trump administration, which is citing constitutional privilege. Obviously, that delay was not granted, but another Trump tweet yesterday underscored for both sides the importance of Kavanaugh's confirmation and specifically how he might rule in the limits of executive power. The president blamed Jeff Sessions yesterday for recent criminal charges against the first two Republican congressmen to endorse Trump for president, tweeting, Two easy wins now in doubt because there's not enough time. Good job, Jeff. So while most may believe the Justice Department is supposed to be a nonpartisan entity, it seems the man in the corner office believes otherwise. What does this all mean for the future of our country? Joining me to discuss are Martha Coakley, former state attorney general, now partner at Foley Hoag. Hello, Martha. Hi, Jim. And former chair of the Mass GOP, Jennifer Nassour. She's now the COO of Reflect Us. It's a bipartisan, female-focused political organization aiming to shift the electoral culture. We need some shifting. Nice yes, to see you. It's Jennifer, it. so, you know, I felt today, I, I was on the air through part of it, but I watched a lot this afternoon, like I'm watching a scripted play. The Republicans fawn. The Democrats express outrage, and at the end of the day, uh, uh, this nominee replaces Anthony Kennedy. End of discussion. Did I get anything wrong there? Probably right, except for Senator Flake. And there are a few differences here with the, you know, asking to adjourn. And it's the first time I've seen the process put on the candidate shoulders. Several of the senators suggested, do you really want to be the Supreme yeah. Court justice with an asterisk? You're going to be the one judging this man. So, but in the end, I think you're right. They don't have, the Democrats don't have the numbers. You know, I'm going to get back to numbers. The thing I didn't understand, I mentioned this to you today, General. I don't understand why Chairman Grassley, a uh, Republican chair, didn't just say, listen, you don't really need more time. But in the spirit of bipartisanship, to show us how fair we are, we'll adjourn to, I don't know, Thursday. What's lost by the Republicans, by the President of the United States, it seems like they're fair-minded and open. There was, they wouldn't even allow a vote on the issue uh, of uh, temporary adjournment. Am I wrong about that? Well, so I think, you know, there are numerous things at play here. So number one, you have a little bit of the Nancy Pelosi, um, you know, pass this, sign off on this document, on this health care law, and then read it later, where the Republicans get to play that game now. But then also you have the divisive nature that we have in the United States Congress right now, and where each faction is being pulled in a different way. And so... They're not you know, being pulled. They're, they're, they're allowing themselves they're, they are. to go in different well, well, and if it was Chairman the Democrats, Grassley had the power to do whatever he wanted today. And if it was Democrats, they would be doing the same thing, where they would say, this is our person, I, I, just as they were trying to do with Merrick Garland. And, and, I, speaking, and I would say the analogy is more Merrick Garland than Nancy Pelosi in terms of the public's view of this thing. Well, let me make another analogy. that While the reason why Democrats, and you might argue America, finds themselves in this situation with uh, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, is because in 2013, the Democrats decided it was okay yes. to get rid of the 60-vote threshold for all judge nominees other than the Supreme Court. And what's good for the goose was good for the Republicans in 2017. You want to do it for all the other judges? We'll do it for the Supreme Court. And now this notion of 60 votes, which pretty much guaranteed you had to get some votes from the other party, is gone. So the Democrats yep. are as much to blame, aren't they, for I, this? I agree with that. I think, you know, as they started to 
escalate on either side. They thought, we want the short-term win, we want the short-term win, and then both sides, when, when and if this shifts, are, both sides are going to suffer from this. Ultimately, the people in the country suffer from this. You know, you, do you have, I know you're not a huge Trump fan, but you're a good conservative. Is that a fair description yes. of you? Are you troubled by the fact, this is not legally the case, but in a de facto way it is, the president was almost named an unindicted co-conspirator in the Michael Cohen situation. An unindicted co-conspirator is essentially picking a man who will serve on the Supreme Court probably through all of our lifetimes and probably through a significant chunk of work. Does that trouble you at all, even if you love the, the policies of the man? Does the process bother you at all? Well, I mean, so he wasn't named, and he is the president of the United States. Well, he was named. He, he was just not named as an unindicted co-conspirator, Michael Cohen. Right, named. exactly. Well, and Michael Cohen, is his character is, as far as I'm concerned, pretty much, uh, you know, up in flames right now. Do you right doubt now. that the president was part of that deal? I don't know what the... I, I okay. doubt... I, you know what? I, I'm not sure that the president was... But what I will say is this. While the president is the president of the United States, the president gets to pick who serves and who he nominates. And the president picks someone who has been on the bench for 12 years, who has done his service, has a long history within, you know, the party, with being a judge. And so he picked who he thought was going to be Can the best person. That's but, a fair but, point, but, isn't but, it? I mean, but, elections do have consequences, but he, as one Barack Obama said. I, I agree, but he doesn't get to pick the judge on his own trial. And I think that if he is confirmed, I think senators today were laying the groundwork that he's going to have to recuse himself if something comes out of the Mueller investigation. And what if he doesn't say he'll recuse himself? I mean, he's already on the record about uh, about uh, lack of limits on executive power, about, quote, distractions, otherwise known as investigations and those kinds of things, of sitting presidents. Shouldn't he say to the American people in this hearing, I will recuse myself if these kinds of issues arise? Well, so <clears throat> does that mean that um, Neil Gorsuch should do the same exact thing and recuse himself because he was also nominated and ultimately received his appointment through the president? I mean, you know, so we're going to now pick and choose people. If, if you put yourself out there to be nominated for the United States Supreme Court, I'm going to assume that you are a person of upstanding moral character and that you are making judgments based on what your beliefs are and not who got you to that position. And I think it would be unfair to put that upon Kavanaugh to say right now what he would do Quick, in the event of that happening. Quickly, how about it? Should Neil Gorsuch not be, sub if anybody appointed by this president? Well, he wasn't an unindicted co-conspirator when he was appointed. And so the issue right now, though, is that he has been nominated by a president who, through executive privilege is refusing to turn over papers that would help them make the right decision. Let's talk a little bit more about the person who nominated. If the uh, unindicted co-conspirator thing didn't work with you, maybe this will. Bob Woodward has a little better reputation than I do. <laughs> His book is coming out in a week, but the Washington Post wrote about it today. Bob Woodward, obviously, of Watergate fame. Here are a couple of excerpts. This, uh, the book's called Fear. This is John Kelly. Kelly frequently lost his temper and told colleagues he thought the president was, quote, unhinged. In one small group meeting, Kelly said of Trump, he's an idiot. We're in crazy town. I don't even know why any of us are here. This is the worst job I've ever had. James Mattis, we know who he is. Woodward recounts, Mattis was particularly exasperated and alarmed, telling close associates president acted like and had the understanding of a fifth or sixth grader. Bob Woodward on Jeff Sessions, mocking Sessions' accent. Trump added, quote, this guy is mentally retarded. He's this dumb Southerner. He couldn't even be a one-person country lawyer down in Alabama. You know, I read these excerpts. Obviously, I haven't seen the whole book yet. This is not an argument that uh, uh, the president is wrong in whatever that means on the issues. Maybe he's not as up on foreign policy as he should be. This is a case that the president of the United States is unfit to be the president of the United States and to make appointments like this one. What, what is, assuming this is all true, what is Congress supposed to do here? Just count the days for the next two years or the next six years? Why are you laughing? Well, because I think it's hysterical. The man was elected after he said, I could shoot someone in the face in the middle of Fifth Avenue, was still overwhelmingly elected. His chief of staff says he's unhinged and an idiot. Don't you think it's unhinged when you say, I could shoot someone in the middle of the street and still be elected? I mean, he was unhinged the entire time. It's not the only thing he said that makes him appear that way, but what, what he is is a, is a sociopath. He's antisocial. He's very good at it. He's not stupid. He's not a moron, but he is driven by this character 
that he has no compassion, he has no empathy for anybody. He's driven to be better than everybody else. He's a pathological liar. So what do you do? I mean, Jamie it, Raskin, who I happened to bump into on vacation, the congressman from Maryland, is the one who's spoken about the 25th Amendment. It's passed in 67 in the wake of Kennedy's assassination. One provision has never been dealt with. The incapacitation has, obviously, as we know, Ronald Reagan, but has not been used uh, versus uh, in uh, mental or physical fitness. He proposed putting a committee together with former presidents, that sort of thing. Congress, including Democrats, do not seem to want to confront the issue about whether or not this president is mentally fit to be the president. So he will be held accountable, obviously not by those around him. I assume they're trying to do the best for the country at this stage, but by a change in the election and an independent judiciary. Two years from now? Uh, no. Well, Mueller report uh, when, oh, okay. when we have an election in, in, the, in November. What should Congress do here? We and, have 30 and so, seconds. So, you know, I, I agree with what Martha is saying. It, it, I mean, that's why we have an electoral system and a democratic process in the United States that is unparalleled anywhere else in the world, right? So people have an opportunity in 2020 to elect a new leader. Maybe there are Republicans that are going to come out to challenge him. Maybe there are Democrats that are, can actually win against him. Right now, that's not going to to happen. The, he's a narcissist. We all know that. I think the best thing to do is to make sure that we have elected representatives in the House and in the Senate who can make sure that they are holding this country together for as long as so possible. You're supporting a Democratic House of Representatives. No, That's I'm not. I'm joke. not. My joke, Republicans. Or Republicans, <laughs> uh, Republicans doing their job. Good to see you, Martha Copley, Jennifer Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks so much.